Windows upgrades are kind of in limbo. This is an opportunity for Linux. Let's go ahead and have a look at what might be going on here. Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Of course, this is Wednesday, and we like talking about Windows on Wednesday. And uh, we use this to look at some of the factors causing people to, sh to look at Linux or alternative operating systems. Some of the things that Windows does, some, some of the things Windows does are obviously very good, uh, but there's a number of things to question and go, hey, I don't quite know about that. And so today I did want to have a look at some articles and statements from uh, both Michael Dell and from uh, Enrique Lores, the CEO of HP, as they had some comments about uh, Windows upgrades during the uh, the recent conferences. Now, to be clear what we're talking about here, this is not upgrading from Windows 10 to Windows 11. This is upgrading your actual PC hardware. So that's what they're talking about. So if you like this type of content, subscribe to the channel for more. Hit that uh, like button down there and leave us a comment what you think about this topic down below. And with that, let's go ahead and have a look at the articles here. And this one is from the register. Windows 11 refreshes delayed. Uh, I also looked at the Tech Radar article, which had more about, uh, was a little bit clearer about the hardware, but I like some of the, the quoting and things better in the register. So what's basically going on and what they're talking about is mostly in the commercial realm. But understand that while this is mostly looking in the commercial realm, oftentimes your work computer is what gives you the experience to know what you might want to run at home or maybe might not want to run at home. Many people first tried out Windows 11 in their work environment because it was forced upon them. So they look at it and go, hmm, I don't know. And I'm going to say, I mean, if you're if you're business and you got to run Windows, that's fine. Even if you're self-employed somehow and you still have to run Windows for something, that's fine too. But what I do want to alert you to is that there are other options out there and it behooves us to examine those various options. Of course, what I would believe and recommend for people is anything in your personal life, you should run Linux, whether that's a external hard drive or a a secondary hard drive or uh, some form of virtualization, anything that's going to help protect you from the all-seeing eye of Microsoft, then you're going to be in a much better position. But I do recognize that there's software you cannot necessarily get to run. Now, before we delve into this, though, what's really hilarious is there was actually an article a couple weeks ago looking at the fact that uh, one of the big things people always complain about on this channel, like, oh, I can't switch to Windows, gaming doesn't work. I can't switch to Linux, gaming doesn't work, right? And so the, the Copilot Plus PCs that are amazing AI PCs, and they can't play many games very well. <laughs> So Microsoft's saying, yeah, if you're into it for the gaming, avoid the Copilot Plus PCs. Now, a lot of this has to do with the fact that these are ARM processors and they have to have a separate virtualization compatibil compatibility layer on them in order to play your games. And this introduces some performance hits. Such that some people who have uh, had experience with these have actually saying that running on Linux with Proton for many of these games works better than playing the game on a Windows Copilot Plus. Plus PC, which is very interesting in and of itself. So if we're talking about gaming, it's actually getting good enough. You might consider the switch to Linux because the gaming is really making it there. A lot of the the crop, uh, props to Steam, who has been doing a lot of good backporting, uh, contributing to the Proton projects and things like that. And I'm not a gamer. I can't help you. Don't leave me a comment. How do I get this game working? I don't know. I know there's a Proton database where you can go search in your game over there and they will tell you all of the best settings. That's the best help I'm going to do. I still play games from 20 to 30 years ago. They all work fine just on a basic wine install. I'm not a gamer and that's just the the way I am. But I am a small business owner. And as a small business owner, I do everything on my Linux computers. Because I have full control, it's very simple. I'm not using Windows. How do I accomplish X task without using Windows? Ah, I can now figure it out. 
Now, that being said, let's go ahead and get into what the register has to say. So what they're talking about here is there's aging computers in the commercial environments. Now, a lot of the big refreshes were done around the Kufi times. And the reason for that happened to be that everyone was forced to work more online. A lot of people got newer computers around uh, four years ago this point in time, those computers are getting old, but many of those computers cannot upgrade to Windows 11 and Windows 10 is reaching end of life. So if you happen to be a work at home employee, you may not be able to continue using Windows 10 if you needed that for work because the company is like, yeah, we kind of need security support and things like that, which is completely understandable. Now, the problem that we have that uh, both Michael Dell and Erika Laura has said both of these have said the problem with upgrading is we don't even know what the market's going to look like because there's this proliferation of AI everywhere. And the problem is we do not have a lot of AI based computers, but the sheeple of the world would like everything to have AI implemented because they think it's going to save them all this time. <laughs> Footnotes. It really doesn't, honestly. But it's the big trendy faddish type thing to do. And we all know that every time a brand new iPhone rolls out, there's a certain percentage of of Apple users that take their perfectly good iPhone and trade it in and trade up more payments. People do the same thing with their cars. They trade in their car for another one and live their entire life on car payments and entire life on phone payments. And who knows, maybe we'll see more entire life on computer payments. There are some computer rental systems we talked about on the weekly news roundup as well. With that being said, though, what they got into here is they're talking at this conference. Michael Dell says that the there's a long waited cycle to search uh, to swap out the fleet computers. They said it's been delayed. A lot of the reasons first economically. OK, and he does address this. I think the other article might have actually had his, the better quote on this one. I, I should have uh, kept that up. But the first factor is economically. These computers are expensive, and if you want to upgrade your entire fleet of, you know, 50 work computers, whatever, in your in your small business office, that's a very hefty thing, especially since many of those computers continue to work just fine. They just won't run Windows 11, and Windows 10 is reaching end of life. This is actually why we see some organizations looking at doing an open source thing to save on you know, A, to save on the cost of buying new hardware, but B, saving on software licenses as well. We saw, I think Switzerland was doing that as well. And so we see this push towards it. But he says the another factor was the fact that AI PCs, you know, everyone wants the AI, but there's no good apps and there's no good AI PCs out. We only have a couple models out now, and they're all much more expensive. And so the companies don't want to trade out these lower spec computers for these massive high end things. But everyone's going to demand AI. So if you buy a computer, what they're saying down here is if you buy a computer and it doesn't have AI in it, you wonder what is wrong. Because we've been so talked to constantly about AI, AI, AI. Now, I personally would prefer a computer with AI. I'm, I want to buy a computer without AI, just like I want to buy a television without a smart capability built in. Okay, I do not want my basic stuff connecting to the internet. Obviously, the computer connects to the internet, but I want to have more control over it, and I do not want AI systems crammed into it. And that's kind of my fear, is that will we be able to buy computers without AI nonsense integrated into it in the future? That's a question. Let's go ahead and have a look at some of the quotes, though. Uh, what he says down here is, first, we have a certain date with Windows 10 end of life. We're almost within a year of that, and that's when the enterprise IT people start uh, start screwing around and saying, hey, we better do something about this. You know, the migration change. Windows 10 is reaching end of life. I mean, how many people are still running CentOS 7? It reached end of life a while ago. Hey, I elevated my CentOS servers to Alma Linux. I'm good. <laughs> I don't know if y'all are, but I'm good. I'm on Alma Linux now instead of CentOS 7. So, you know, it's, you got to plan ahead for these things. I plan ahead for that. It was a crazy summer, but I did it. <laughs> Come on. Uh, so Enrica says, 
Uh, first, there are a few large and aging uh, installed base of PCs. Many of the PCs were bought during COVID and now are four or five years. And uh, after they were bought, they will have to be replaced. So we see have an opportunity driven by Windows 11 refresh that is only starting now. And this is what is behind some of the strength we see on the commercial side. Microsoft will start discontinuing their support for previous versions, that is Windows 10. And this always ties the replacement and the upgrade. This is going to drive demand in the coming years. However, I feel like we've been hearing the reasons for the slowish update for a while is incompatible hardware. So he's talking here about if a company could just upgrade their existing hardware to Windows 11, they would not bother upgrading all of the hardware at all. The problem is most of the hardware they bought cannot be upgraded to Windows 11. And this is where Microsoft really needs to be pushed back and say, hey, you're contributing to massive amounts of e-waste and damaging the environment because we're going to have to throw away these perfectly good computers so that we can buy new ones. Now, of course, this drives the economic sales of a bunch more computers at the harm of the business who will have to forego pay raises for everybody else. In other words, the big company will get a much more bigger payout through the economic thing, but the lower level workers at the employee at the uh, company may suffer from lower costs, you know, like, like lower wages because the company had to divert the extra expenses towards that rather than uh, labor salary boosts or things like that. And so this is not actually as good for the economy, even though it's the boosting of sales, you're selling, you're, 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 you're buying a lot of computers, enriching a small few companies instead of spreading the wealth among the employees who will then go out and use the extra funds for a variety of different jobs, businesses, hobbies, and things like that. So I think that uh, Windows is actually, uh, despite their driving some computer sales, it's not necessarily as good for the economy as if the people were not forced to buy the new systems as companies could, in theory at least. Yeah, the question is, is a company going to do that? Eh, maybe, maybe not. Honestly, most of your small businesses do take a lot better care of their employees and they're the ones hurt by this. Your mega, mega corporations like Microsoft and Comcast, yeah, they, they don't care. They're going to take all of the saved expenses and keep it for themselves. But a small business owners, they do take care of their employees really well. And that small business will pass the savings on to their employees because happy employees make a good and thriving company. Whereas a corporation is too big to fail. <laughs> That's a problem. But he says, since businesses, we only recently, uh, some businesses, this is another reason for the slow upgrade, some of them only recently moved to Windows 10 and are not keen on rushing to Windows 11. He says, I agree the next year is going to be make or break time. I expect we see businesses either upgrade hardware to move to Windows 11 or decide to try the new virtual desktops. We covered this one briefly as well. So you can now have a shell of an old computer, but then access all of your actual computer through a cloud-based virtual desktop. And so some employees or some companies might look into doing that model as well. So um, he told the register via email, micro, macroeconomic uncertainty is made. IT decision makers hesitate, but we are expected, uh, nevertheless, expect replacement demands to drive 6% of the growth in commercial market um, next year up from 1%. So, you know, 5% increase uh, over that. So a lot of the problem that people are talking about down here at the bottom, I believe, had to do with the AI. Michael Dell addressing this says if new PC lands on a user's desk that does not have an AI feature, they're going to wonder what happened. Everyone's going to want that. Uh, speak of AI, every piece of software you're going to want to use is going to have an AI assistant and you're already starting to see uh, and uh, to see this. And most of those cycles are going to be run uh, run locally on the PC. So this is where the marketing has driven the demand for AI, even though AI is not nearly as useful as is being marketed as, it's still a feature everybody wants, which is in and of itself harmful, but this means a lot of extra expenses, which in this economic setting, because the economy is doing really bad, um, despite what some people might say on the internet, uh, particularly those among current administrations trying to remain in current administrations, saying the economy is great, but they're gonna fix it on day one. I, okay then. 
The bottom line is, I just went to buy eggs the other day, and they're twice as much as they were a couple months ago. <laughs> and when everything is doing that, people are not going to be as keen as to buy a new computer. And if you're stuck with, I have to run an insecure Windows 10 or buy a new computer, many of them will stay on the insecure Windows 10, which is a problem. But that also brings with it the opportunity that if people are aware, you can take that insecure Windows 10 and turn it into a secure Linux for free. That is our opportunity. Now, this, of course, works for the person that is not necessarily want everything integrated with AI. And that raises the next form of question. Are we seeing circumstances and situations where people can get in here and do uh, do work without having that shiny AI? Do they need that shiny AI? Do they want that shiny AI? If the answer is no, this is where we have an opportunity in the Linux world to sit down and say, look, we have to come in here and create a secure computer without upgrading to Windows 11 because your computer is not capable. Try out this operating system. And if we in the Linux community can do this, we can buy a couple thumb drives, which are getting extraordinarily cheap. We can install live keys of Linux Mint or some other easy to use Linux distribution and hand those out to our friends and show them how to boot into the live system, show them they can still get onto the internet, they can sign in, they can check their email, they can do all these things that they regularly do. And it's like, wow, the computer's not constantly bothering me and constantly nagging me. I can do about everything. And then you'll have to hold their hand a little bit, be like, yeah, if you want to install a game, you have to run through this separate program. You might have to explain how to install it because installing an operating system is something that even though it is easy, particularly for us in the Linux world, it's, I mean, installing an operating system, that's easy, you know, but other people don't realize how easy it is. So you might need to give them a hand, but it produces an amazing opportunity for us to get Linux in the hands of people, whether they're wiping that Windows 10 computer or they're just using that shell of that Windows 10 computer with an external hard drive or a flash drive or something else, we're going to see a circumstance where we can actually take this hesitation to upgrade and make a Linux user and say, wow, this is actually a really, really good system. And so while the uh, HP and Dell are looking at the lags, a lot of the lag has to do with the fact that people want the AI, but there's not enough AI, but Windows 10 is being phased out. Windows 11 is here. And then now we have the economic factor of buying new computers. Now the businesses are going to do what the businesses have to do, but the individual users who are using those computers, they might look at Windows 11. Just keep your ears out. When it says like, oh, we changed to Windows 11. It is so horrible. Be like, yeah, I don't know what that's like. Have you ever seen my Linux system? Because a lot of people still think Linux is all about this command lines. Show them a Linux computer. They're like, wait, what? This is Linux? It's an amazing opportunity for us. So we can take this hesitation to upgrade your hardware because we're waiting for the AI PCs, but Windows 10 is coming to an end and people are kind of stuck in this Windows upgrade limbo. Use this as an opportunity to teach some people about Linux today and talk to them about the merits of privacy and security without having to hand everything over and be beholden to a big corporation like Microsoft. So there is what our thoughts are for today. If you like this type of content, leave us your uh, comments down below. Subscribe to the channel if you are not already subscribed and let us know what you think. Thanks for watching and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.